Hey, what's going on everybody? So where we left off, we've had our ESXi server up and running. We did a couple of modifications to the configuration where we set up the, the time and we also did the DNS config. Another thing that I wanna point out here is we are gonna have to do some networking configuration. So the first thing is everything that you're gonna have here is uh, just switch zero. What you're gonna do is, let me go ahead and just remove this one here. You're gonna create a new vSwitch and I'm gonna assign one of my network cards to that vSwitch. I'm gonna call it trunk promiscuous or just prom for short. And of course, since it's a trunk, I'm gonna uh, put all of the VLAN IDs on it. Click next, next. You'll see the properties value here. If you go into properties, go to edit, and you wanna enable under security, you wanna accept promiscuous mode and click okay. And once you got that done, then you have your network uh, settings ready. So let me go ahead and deploy the OVA. So I had some issues earlier today with uh, version 3.13. I'm gonna try version 3.14 uh, so if you, if you want the exact version, this is what I downloaded from the Cisco website. This is a CSR 1000V 3.14 1S. Going to go ahead and import that. I'm going to call this one router 1 or R1. Small, uh, thick provision, lazy zero. I'll leave that all the same for now and I'll let it deploy that. It shouldn't take too long. It's actually pretty quick. There you go. So now if you expand this, you'll see that you have the VM ready. Now one of the things that you're gonna need to do is edit the settings, but you're gonna have this problem because you're using uh, a trial version and because the version that Cisco use is VMX10, the issue that you're gonna have is you won't be able to edit the settings unless you're using Cisco vSphere, I'm sorry, the VMware vSphere web client, which you won't be able to have if you're doing the trial. So there is a workaround. What you're going to do is right click, remove this device from the inventory, and then go to summary. You want to right click on the data store, click browse. Then under here you see this VMX file. You want to click the download button. I'm going to put it on the desktop. Now I have this file on the desktop. I'm going to right click it and I am going to open it up with notepad and right here where it says version I'm going to change that to version 9 and then click save alright so now I'm going to click on the folder here back in the data store I'm going to upload that file back in so let's do uh, desktop and put it back in and I do want to replace it so there you go so now the new VMX file is in there and now what you do is actually open up the store again and right click on the VMX file and add to inventory next next finish and now you got it there and now you'll notice when you highlight you're on VMX version 9 so that's what you need now you can click on edit settings and you want each of these network adapters uh, to be on trunk promiscuous that's so that you can have communication between the routers and switches. So here you gotta make sure that your memory is at 2.5. Uh, it's not, let's do 2500. Uh, one, CP, one CPU is fine and that's good. You wanna make sure that this is already set. Now the other thing that you want to do is you want to add another device. You want to add a serial port, go next, connect via network, server, and then this is going to be Telnet. This is going to be the IP address of my server. And then I'm going to use ports 5001 all the way up to 5020 for all my 
um, router instances. Next, next, and that's that's good. All right, so all that looks good. Um, let's go to the, to the server. Go to configuration. A couple of things that you have to keep in mind. First, under security profile, you have to go under firewall. Go to properties, and then you're going to see this VM serial port connection over network. You want to check that. To be sure that's in. Uh, you want to allow connections from any IP address. That's fine. And click OK. The other thing that I would recommend is going down to software, advanced settings, going over to memory or mem, and this second field is going to be one, but you want to set it to zero. This is so it can allow you to uh, more efficiently use your memory. So that that worked really well for me. So that's what I'd recommend. Uh, another thing, if you want to have these uh, routers start up uh, automatically, you can go ahead and do that. But personally, I every time I boot up my server, I want to put up different different uh, routers, different servers. So I I am not going to do that. All right. So um, I, I believe that we're good to go. We can go ahead and power on the server here, the VM. Let me do this. It's fine. Now this usually takes a little while. What I recommend is just to leave it. You don't have to touch anything until you get to the uh, Cisco prompt. So I'll just leave it running and I'll be back once, uh, once I'm ready to continue. So you'll see this. Do not press any key, just leave it running. Like I said, you just have to essentially let it do what it has to do and you should be okay. All right, at this point, you'll know that it's just about done. So just give it a couple more minutes. This entire process shouldn't take more than about five minutes or so. All right, almost there. And there we are. So here I'm gonna type in no. So you're gonna get a whole bunch of output here. Pretty much just ignore it and wait till it all clears up. configure terminal mode and I want to type in the command platform um, console serial and pretty much what that command does is it allows you to um, access this router so via the serial connection that we put on the VM so I'm gonna go ahead and do that the other thing I'm gonna change the I'm gonna change the host name here over to, well, you know what, for now I'm going to leave the host name exactly the same. I'm going to do a write memory. You can also do a copy, run start. And just out of experience that I had from the last iOS version, or um, CSR 1000V version, rather than actually reloading it, I'm actually just going to shut down the guest manually. So hopefully that will avoid the problem that I had before okay so now the guest is shut down we go and turn it back on and hopefully that'll uh, go through correctly alright so at this point you can go ahead and close up your your console session here open up your ES um, not your ESXi your your putty terminal or your secure CRT you can set up a whole bunch of sessions here. I have a telnet session to router one going to 1.250, which is, of course, the, um, the ESXi server on port 5001. If I click connect, 
as you can see I'm able to access it and I'm able to go ahead and make configuration changes from here and I can do a show version and as you can see I am here running the three dot let's do Yep, three dot one four. So if you do a show IP interface brief, you'll see you got your three dot connections here. So those cor correspond to the three network cards that I have on the VM. So that's um, we go to edit settings. It's these right here. So that's cool. So that's completely up and running, and it should be working without a problem. Now, what we need to do is, because we can't really be using, or you can use one router, but what you really want is to have more than one. So I'm going to set up 20 of them, uh, and I'm going to go one by one and, and set them up. Probably, I'll pause the video until I have, um, you know, a whole bunch of them. But let me walk you through the process once here. Let me go ahead and shut down. Once uh, your first router here is shut down, you want to go up to your server. You want to go to your data store, browse data store. Then essentially what you want to do is create a clone of this one device. So what I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and look at this stuff. And let's see if we can make a copy of this. So the way you do that is you look at whatever is in router one and you copy this. You want to copy and then you create a new folder so under the root you create a new folder this is going to be router 2 and inside of there I'm going to paste all that in there so it's going to be the exact same thing all the VMX settings that we changed earlier should correspond here to uh, router 2 so it's copying all that stuff over all right and then finished so what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to right click on this add to inventory but instead I'm going to call this one router 2 or R2 and there you go so now you have that you can go ahead and go to router 2 check on the settings and you have all of the correct settings here except for probably just this one this is 5001 what you need to do is change that to 5002 because this is router 2 so you essentially are going to do that for the number of devices that you want so I want 20 of them so I'm gonna to have to uh, repeat that process 20 times until I got that ready so let's go ahead and look at um, the configuration under networking you'll notice here that your V switch that all of your routers here are all connecting here to this trunk promiscuous vSwitch one and that's what you want in the INE environment for CCIE this VNEC one would be the trunk connection to switch one in your environment so if you wanted to go ahead and trunk all of your uh, routers over to that switch you would program you know port one on switch one as a trunk connect this over and then all of these routers will have sub interfaces that logically separate out the networks and that works really really well so once you have the concept of, uh, of VLANs and how to separate them using um, uh, sub interfaces then you could pretty much take your your studying to the next level and I have a, a another video that talks a little bit about uh, sub interfaces and the power of them so at this point you guys get the idea of how to set up the CSR 1000 V's for your lab environment. Uh, the only thing that you really have to keep in mind, uh, the, the routers here, you don't have to worry about. Um, there's no license that you have to apply, at least not in this version, in 3.14. And now in 3.12, that was a case where you'd have to apply a license. Here you do not. 
uh, the only thing that you're going to have an evaluation on right now is the 60 days that you have for ESXi. So that's really the only thing that you'd have to do is rebuild uh, the server from there. But that really shouldn't be too much of an issue. Um, it's not that bad. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. And uh, if you did, be sure to leave a like and we'll talk to you guys next time. Bye-bye.